My name is Nick Marquez. I reside in Grand Junction, Colorado. I uh, hooked up with favoriteagent.com about four years ago, and my success started there. I have had several clients in excess of a million dollars. I've had many, many clients in excess of $300,000 in purchases, and my referral business, of course, is growing each year. I wouldn't trade favoriteagent.com for another service for anything, and I highly recommend that you sign up with favoriteagent.com for your area. Just stay out of mind. Okay, now let's take the pieces and put them together into a lethal listing presentation. For quick review, what are the pieces? Well, first there's knowing your market statistics so that you're truly the best person for the job. Knowing the value of the subject property so that you can get the top dollar for your seller client. Beginning the process without laying this foundation simply won't work. It's absolutely critical that you go through the first two steps before you learn the listing presentation, simply because the presentation builds on this foundation. Without a suitable foundation or solid ground, you'll be building your, your presentation on quicksand, and you won't be able to list properties using, a, using my unique method. Why? Because you won't have the most important element of any sale, the believability factor. This approach is counterintuitive and as such it demands that you have credibility. If you don't have credibility, the listing approach will never sell because you're asking the client to place his faith in an approach that in all likelihood he's never heard of before. Okay, there are more than 1.1 million realtors in America and I guess you could say that there are 1.1 million ways to sell a house. But the truth of the matter is that there are really only two ways to sell a house. You can sell it by price or you can sell it by traffic. Every other sales method is a subsidiary of one of those two. Now we're going to explore the two different approaches at length and discuss how they differ and how one of them will, will yield far better results for your client while making you more money. First let's talk about the traditional approach or what I call the price approach. Now, I, I've read dozens of books, probably hundreds of books, on the subject of real estate. And many of these books speak of the importance of listing real estate, and all of them describe nearly identical listing approaches with only slight differences. Now, the reason for all this sameness is obvious. It's the way listings have been done since the beginning of real estate. It's the old, if it ain't broke, don't fix it thing. Well, I'm here to tell you it's broke. If you expect to make a lot of money in real estate, you need to determine what everybody else is doing and then do the opposite. Okay, here's the basic formula for the traditional or price approach. As you'll recall, we talked earlier about building a CMA or comparative market analysis for your client. The traditional approach teaches us to find the reasonable range, uh, the range of value, and then try to list the property on the low end of that range. If the home doesn't sell within a month or so, we're all taught to do what? You got it, to ask for a reduction in price. And then if the property still doesn't sell, we lower the price again, and again, and again, and again, until eventually we find a buyer for the place. Think about it. We're selling the house by price. We're using the price as our marketing tool. That's why we continue to lower the price or wait for appreciation in the market to lower the price for us until the house eventually sells. One of the reasons this approach works well for the agent is that it places the entire burden of selling the home on the seller. Another reason for using the traditional approach is that the agent doesn't have to spend a lot of money marketing the house. He doesn't have to spend a lot of time or effort devising a marketing plan or promoting the property because the price is doing the selling for him. Now, there's no doubt that this approach will work. Of course it'll work. It's been working for decades with good and bad agents alike. However, there are a few drawbacks to the traditional approach that are seldom ever mentioned. First and foremost is the agency issue. 
It's your job as a listing agent to represent the seller's interests, which include getting the absolute top, bu top dollar uh, for the property. However, most agents don't get top dollar when they use this approach, and the reason is as simple as supply and demand. When there are fewer buyers competing for a home, the sale price may need to be discounted substantially in order to attract interest. In economic speak, with a fixed supply and a scarce demand, i.e. fewer buyers, then prices will drop. Another drawback to using this approach is the lack of speed. Several months pass uh, before the traditional approach begins to have an effect. And in the process, the home often becomes stigmatized. After several reductions, it's not even shown to potential buyers because it's been on the market too long. And it's now assumed to have something wrong with it. If the agent starts to to, to uh, if he starts the process too high and then reduces the price too slowly, the home becomes very difficult to sell at any price. Many times, listing agents unwittingly become de facto buyer subagents, and even though I don't know a single listing agent who would intentionally sell out his client, it's entirely too easy with the traditional listing approach to help the buyer rather than seller. And yes, I realize that my judgment may sound harsh, but if you'll honestly examine this method, you will have to agree that very often it doesn't yield the best results for the seller. Okay, the other approach, uh, remember I said there were two. The second approach is the traffic approach. To understand the traffic approach, we need to turn our attention again to the reasonable range. Real estate is entirely uh, different from liquid investments with absolute values. For instance, anybody can look up a share of stock and immediately see its current price. But because values are subjective in real estate, there tends to be about 10% flexibility in the price range. Consider a home that's valued at $100,000. It's not worth exactly $100,000. It's really worth somewhere between $95,000 and $105,000. So if the price drops below $95,000, nearly everyone will agree that the house is a good deal. And if the price goes above $105,000, nearly everyone will agree that the property is priced a little too high. However, within that reasonable range, there's very little price resistance. Now, here's how the traffic approach works. Instead of listing the home at the low end of the, of the range, you raise its price to the high end. Now, there's a problem. Now, there's no compelling reason for anyone to show it or buy it. Okay, here's the secret weapon. You raise the commission by 2%. Now, what you're doing effectively is bribing agents to include your listing on their show list. What I do is raise my commission from 6% to 8%, and then I raise the price about 10%. Remember, we were in the theoretical example, 95000 We raised to 105000 The client then nets about 8% more money before any negotiations. Sometimes, not often, the appraisal knocks the price down a bit. When that happens, it's usually a minor adjustment, and then the seller has the option of lowering the price to match the appraisal, or else the deal as written falls apart. The buyer also has the option of paying out of pocket the shortfall in the appraisal or canceling the deal if there's an appraisal contingency. Now, when that happens, the client knows that he got the absolute top dollar for his home. Now, I know, I know that almost any realtor will immediately say, I never look at the commission when I'm working for a buyer. But I don't believe that noble sounding claim because statistics clearly indicate that it's not true. I don't know any agent who would willfully sell a buyer client a home that wasn't right for him. But if there are 60 homes in the market that generally match the client's criteria, and if three of those homes pay higher commissions than the rest, it's certainly not unethical to make sure that those three properties end up on every show list. In addition, there's nothing wrong with hoping that your client chooses to buy one of the three. If he doesn't, no big deal, but if he does, you just got a big bonus. One of the questions I'm often asked is why I don't just offer a bonus to the selling agent. Once again, the answer is simple. Every buyer's agent knows that if he doesn't present a full offer, the first money to come off the table will be the selling bonus. And since most homes don't sell for full offers, the selling bonus doesn't happen very often. 
so the buyer's agent can find himself torn between not getting the bonus or not properly representing his client. If he advises his client to offer less than the listing price, he knows that his bonus is almost for sure gone. On the other hand, if he encourages the buyer to pay the listing price, he's probably not fully representing the buyer's interests. For that reason, the selling bonus is often a disincentive rather than a legitimate incentive. Okay, now you have the, the theory behind my listing approach. Call us today at 800-708-7705, extension 7400, and we can help you find the technology you need. That number again is 800-708-7705, extension 7400. Or you can visit our website at www.favoritagent.com and, and check out our technology. Our LCM Gateway may be, right, may be the right solution for you, and it may not be, but we're happy to help you either way. In the next session, we'll be discussing the presentation itself, and I believe you'll find it to be the most powerful listing presentation you've ever seen. Until then, work on getting your technology in place, learning all your numbers, and becoming the best agent for the job. There's never going to be a better time to start than right now.